Welcome to the Pandora's Box Pre-Training. In this video, we will talk about the basics of networking, network protocols, graphic card configurations, Pandora's Box products, usage scenarios, and we will introduce you to the Pandora's Box menu with its associated functions and tools. Please note that you will receive pre-training certification at the end of this video, which is your ticket to further trainings. You'll find a link to the very informative video, What is Pandora's Box, right below this video. Please pause this video and watch it now if you have not seen it before. Pandora's Box is a Windows-based real-time media server that operates in a full virtual 3D environment and allows for creative media manipulation using video files, live inputs, still images, and 3D objects. You can link multiple machines together using a regular computer network to create scalable shows. That means an almost unlimited amount of screens. Let's start by talking about how machines communicate in a network. IP is an acronym that stands for Internet Protocol. Every machine in the network is assigned a unique IP address. This is comparable to phone numbers in a telephone network. While there are two versions of the internet protocol out there, namely IP version 4 and IP version 6, we will only be talking about version 4, because this is the version that Pandora's Box and all related products are using. An IP address consists of four numbers, ranging from 0 to 255. They are separated by a dot. While you can use almost any IP address for your machines, there are some addresses that are specifically reserved to be used in a local network. We will use the reserved 10.IP network range in our tutorial to keep it simple. Imagine we have two machines in our network. A is 10.0.0.15 and B is 10.0.0.16. If they are both connected to the same physical network, they should be able to talk to each other. There is one more thing that we have to configure though. Similar to country and region codes in a telephone number, IP addresses also have a notation for subnetworks, called subnets for short. To tell the computer the locally reachable IP addresses, you have to set a subnet mask. The subnet mask generally consists of 255 and 0. In our example, we want all of our machines starting with 10.0.0.x to be able to talk to each other. The required subnet mask would be 255.255.255.0. A 255 basically means that the number in this position has to match on all the machines for them to be able to communicate directly. Now, if we add a third computer called C with the IP address of 10.50.0.20, it would not be able to reach the other machines using a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. That is because the second 255 requires the 0 and the 50 to be the same, while in this example they differ. We can solve this by using a more open subnet mask, namely 255.0.0.0. Now the second number is masked with a 0, denoting that this number may differ and machines are still considered to be on the same network. When working with many machines, it can be useful to auto-assign IP addresses. Most routers offer a service called DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, and it does exactly that. While it is possible to use it, we discourage the usage because it means that computers can change their addresses over time. Pandora's box relies on the IP address to be persistent for operation. Instead, you should statically configure all addresses yourself. Computer networks can have different speeds. Common speeds nowadays are 100 megabit, 1 gigabit, and 10 gigabit. We recommend using at least a 1 gigabit network so that media can be transferred quickly. 10 gigabit network equipment may be more expensive, but it offers higher speeds. Make sure all devices support at least 1 gigabit, otherwise the smallest device may pose a bottleneck for the rest of the machines. A show network should allow network traffic to flow freely. 
if you are using managed switches, they may prevent some data traffic reaching their destinations. Prefer the use of unmanaged switches. Pandora's box makes extensive use of various communication channels such as TCP and UDP protocols for data transfer, synchronization and show control. To make sure they all work, you should disable firewalls, the Windows Defender and not install any antivirus protection on any of the systems running Pandora's box. At the same time, the network should not be connected to the internet. An internet connection may pose a risk for your show without virus protection. Also, servers may update during the show and restart automatically or pop up windows. It is best to keep your Pandora's box network set up as clean as possible and that means avoiding data transfers from devices which don't need to communicate to the Pandora's box setup. If you require internet, use a dedicated machine that is both connected to the show internal network and the internet at the same time. One of the protocols that Pandora's box supports is Artnet. Artnet is the network version of a protocol called DMX. DMX is used to control show equipment like dimmers, intelligent lights or moving heads, and effects. You can also use DMX to control Pandora's box using a USB adapter or Artnet via the network. DMX transports 512 values called channels, with each having a value range from 0 to 255. One set of 512 values is called a universe. Artnet, in contrast, allows you to use 16 universes, each called a subnet. Then again, Artnet can transport 16 subnets. This makes a total of 16 times 16, or 256 universes, or 16 times 16 times 512, which equals 131,072 channels. While the protocol itself allows for the use of 16 subnets with 16 universes, in practice networks are, mainly depending on their network speed, limited to a smaller number. The Pandora's Box product range consists of multiple different license types. Let's look at the first two playback licenses available. They are called Server and Player. The Server license allows for an unlimited amount of video layers, the full 3D environment and the full spectrum of effects. The second type of license is called a Player license. It is limited to a 2D environment and also limited in the number of layers, sequences and effects. In addition to the Player, there is also a Compact Player license that only comes with its own hardware. We'll get to hardware right after talking about software. The third license type is the Manager license. The Manager is a specialized license for show control that can be used to drive larger events. It can only be used to control a show and is not able to play videos in full screen. It has no output capabilities. A special type of Manager license is the Offline Manager an inexpensive version used only for pre-programming. It cannot be used in a show environment. All licenses are stored on a USB key called a dongle. It has to be attached to the machine while running the software and unlocks the features. The Pandora's Box software can be used with pre-configured machines built by Christie. There are also some licenses that you can use with your own machines. The first machine type that we offer is a server. The server can be configured with 1, 2, 4, 8 or no output options. If you decide to buy a server with no outputs, you will only get the hardware but no software license. It is important to know that you can get server software licenses only in combination with server hardware. To meet different performance requirements, the server is available in 5 different performance kits, namely PK1 through to PK5. The higher the performance kit level, the more storage you'll get. For all performance kits, the SYNC card is optionally available to be able to frame lock the outputs on a single and across multiple machines. The second machine type is the player hardware. The player hardware output options include 1, 2, 4 or none. Like the server, a player with no output license 
will not include a Pandora's Box software license. There are four performance kits available. From PK1 through to PK4, a SIM card is again optional. Unlike the server license, the player license can also be acquired without getting player hardware. That means that player licenses can be used in combination with your own hardware. The last hardware option, the compact player, has three output options, one, two or none. The compact player also comes with its own license. Now this license can only be acquired in combination with the compact player hardware. If the no output option is selected, you won't get a Pandora's box license with that machine. You may wonder why there are hardware options with no outputs. The no output option can be used when you don't want the related Pandora's box license, but you still want to use the pre-configured Christie hardware in combination with one of the Christie software products. Also, if you want to update old hardware without purchasing a new license. That means that you can get a server, player or compact player hardware with no outputs and then combine it with either the software player license or one of the manager licenses. You can even use it for the widget designer show control software, which does not form part of this video tutorial. If you are using your own hardware, you can get the software player or the manager licenses. The Pandora's Box software knows two modes of operation. They are called Master Mode and Client Mode. The Master Mode offers all the tools to control a show. There is usually one master per show. All the other Pandora's boxes run in Client Mode. The master can add all clients on the network to show and remotely control them. Note that it is also possible to run a show with only one master, not using any clients. To overcome the output limitation of a single machine, all subsequent machines have to run the client mode. Servers, compact players and players can be started as either master or client. They are both able to control a show as master, as well as being part of a larger show when started in client mode. The manager, however, is an exception. It can only ever be used in master mode. Its purpose is to control or manage a show. When using more than one manager as master for a show, we offer a feature called multi-user. That means you can use multiple managers at the same time to be able to divide programming tasks to multiple operators. Now let's take a look at a few examples. Example number one, standalone compact player. Imagine you have a simple output device like a monitor and a Pandora's box compact player. Now you would like to connect the compact player to the monitor as your output device for playing back the content and using effects in Pandora's box. In this case, you have a standalone setup. We need to start the compact player as master. It's important to know that we can only see our result in the preview of our master while we are programming on the sequence because in this setup, it's not possible to be in full screen and see the Pandora's box interface at the same time. After you finish the programming task, you can then enter full screen and let the show run on your monitor. But what if your setup is more complex? Let's stay with the setup we had, but instead of the monitor, we add two projectors which have a soft edge blend. It is nearly impossible to set this blending because you can never see the final projection and the interface at the same time. It is more comfortable to see directly what you are programming and that is why we prefer to use an additional master which can be a manager or one of the licenses in master mode. Please note that we can use the player, server, compact player products in master mode and connect all of them to different clients without having a limitation of the numbers and the license types of the clients. We are continually improving our software by adding new features or correcting issues that you may encounter. Therefore, we release every few months a new Pandora's box installer with a major version, a minor version and a release number, for example, 6.0.1. When you install and update a new Pandora's box version, please note that the old version will not automatically be removed. You can use it whenever you want to go back to the older versions. Of course, you can uninstall the versions that you don't need anymore. Please note that all devices must run exactly the same version. It is not possible to mix versions in a setup.
The Pandora's Box menu is already pre-installed on all Pandora's Box hardware like servers, players, compact players and the player hardware with the zero output option. It is a menu which starts automatically after booting and covers the Windows desktop. This application is very useful because it gives us access to the most needed actions. With only one click, for example, you could start the Pandora's Box's master or client. You could change the IP addresses of a computer or open the Windows Explorer. It can also be used to communicate between other computers which have the Pandora's Box menu installed and are in the same network range. Let's take a closer look at the Pandora's Box menu options. The first two buttons on the Pandora's Box menu are for starting the Pandora's Box application as a master or client. You can only run master or client on one machine, but not both at the same time. To configure those buttons, we use the configuration button and select the Pandora's Box version to use and also determine a mode for startup after the machine has booted. There is also an option to delay the startup. This may be required as Windows may still be loading services when the Pandora's Box menu is started. When using multiple Pandora's Box masters for different shows on the same network, you have to assign a domain ID. This is to ensure that the masters and clients know where they belong. The default domain is zero and only has to be changed when running multiple shows on one network. Now I would like to demonstrate the connection between a manager and a client with a simple setup to show you how to connect them to each other. We need to apply some important settings before we commence with our show programming task. Our setup consists of one player hardware with a manager license and one dual server which is connected to two projectors. Both devices are connected to the same network switch. The Pandora's Box hardware comes with two onboard network ports, NICs. They are called LAN and LAN2. The IP addresses for LAN and LAN2 are displayed on the Pandora's Box menu if they are set. But how can we set them when they are connected to a network switch? Beside the possibility to change the IP configuration within the Windows settings, it's quite easy to change them directly inside the Pandora's Box menu. Here you can set DHCP checkbox to get an assigned IP for the chosen adapter or to set a fixed IP, submit mask or gateway for it. The gateway is irrelevant for the Pandora's box setups and can therefore be ignored. Once we have fixed IP addresses and subnets for our hardware on the LAN, the IP addresses will be displayed on the Pandora's box menu. The next step is to check the dual service graphics card settings for our projection and to check the Pandora's Box version is the same. Remember that the Pandora's Box version has to be the same on the master and the client, otherwise we cannot connect them to each other. To speed up your workflow and instead of connecting a mouse and keyboard to every machine in your network, we have the possibility to use remote computing for applying the required settings. Therefore, we can use the VNC remote tool from the Pandora's Box menu by clicking on the remote button. So, Let's start the remote tool and check our possibilities. At the top, we find the toolbar. If we know the IP address of the machine we have to access, we can type the IP within the VNC field and press the enter key. Now let's do our first VNC connection. And we did it. Now to disconnect this connection, we can click on the disconnect button next to the VNC field. Please note that this will only work when the Pandora's Box menu is already installed on the machines we want to access and when the machines are in the same network range. If we do not know or have forgotten the IP of the computer we want to access, then we can find the machines within the remote tool. We only need to enter the tools and click on the server control settings. The server control gives us an overview of those machines, like the names, the IP addresses, the MAC addresses, the Pandora's Box application mode when opened, the graphics card information such as the output resolution and the type are displayed for all of these machines. When we press the button add all to view, then we'll get an icon for each connected machine on our grey background. But this is not the only way for creating a view for multiple machines. It is also possible to enter the edit tab and click on the connection button. There we can add or delete our connections. When we click on add, we can type in the IP address, the name, 
and we can also choose the type of our hardware. In addition, we have multiple pages for our different views where we can place our icons. To create a new page, click on the Edit tab, Create Page, choose a name and assign it to that page. To find and access to created pages, we can use the drop-down list for our page view on the toolbar. And finally, to save and open our projects later, we need to enter the File tab. To access the server, we can use the VNC field or double-click on the chosen machine in the server control overview or on the created icons on the background. And there we are. We've connected two projectors to the server. But now we can only see one of them in the VNC window. When we use the scroll bars, then the second output appears. And when we select the VNC button on the remote tool, then we can enable auto scale to see all connected outputs. The view only option prevents us from accidentally clicking on the connected machine. When these options are enabled, we will see the check mark next to the options. We can disable them by clicking again on them. While we are still connected via VNC, we are able to check the graphics card settings on the server. We can open the settings by clicking on the display setup on the Pandora's box menu. The display setup will only open the graphics card settings when there is a NVIDIA graphics card installed in the hardware, which we also recommend when using your own hardware. First of all, we need to check if the connected output devices are recognized by the graphics card, and then we can select them to change the resolution and refresh rate. The resolution describes a number of vertical and horizontal pixels in an image representation. For example, 1920 by 1080. The refresh rate defines the images per second, drawn to the display device. Common frequencies are 25, 30, 50, 60 and 120 Hz. The graphics card gets information about the display or projector in the form of an EDID. The EDID is sent by the output device and includes the native and other possible resolutions as well as the refresh rates. EDID is the short form for Extended Display Identification Data. But sometimes we need to force the graphics cards to think that there would be a different or a very specific uncommon EDID. We can do this in two ways. We can use an EDID managing device in between the graphics card and the output device, or we can set a fixed EDID file directly within the Quadro graphics card. It is possible to create custom EDIDs. We recommend to use this feature only with the respect of knowledge, which is not provided in this tutorial. This procedure can cause Pandora's box not to work properly or can even harm your displays or graphic card if misused. The view system topology gives us a list of the graphics card ports and their connected status and a lot of other information. There is also a helpful tab called system information where we can find any info we want to know about the graphics cards. We can also export an EDID file from the graphics card. We need to enter view system topology Click on the blue highlighted EDID word to open the EDID manager that allows us to export, load and unload EDID files for all of the connectors. Under rotate display, we can change the orientation of the output device. It's only useful for some setups where the output device is physically rotated, but usually it's better to do the setting within Pandora's box. Another useful tab is the Setup Multiple Displays. Here we can identify our output devices, change the recognized order, clone and extend them, or put them together and assign the primary output. Please make sure that the Pandora's Box software is closed while changing the graphics card settings because it can cause issues. To internalize this rule, it is important to check first that all of the Pandora's Box software on all of the machines is closed and then to open the graphics card settings. Now we change the resolutions for both outputs to 1920 by 1080 and change them to extended displays to have two independent outputs in the native resolution. The native resolution means that the graphics cards will create every pixel in a one-to-one -one aspect for the output device. 
When selecting setup and then test pattern on the Pandora's box menu, you can easily choose one of the pre-installed test images for checking the color, brightness, sharpness, and the alignment of the projectors. These test patterns will automatically be loaded in the same resolution we set in the graphics card settings. To continue with our setup, we need to check the content which will be used for playback in Pandora's box. The file browser button on Pandora's box menu opens a Windows Explorer and leads us to the Kulux folder within the C drive. The Kulux folder is automatically generated with the first Pandora's box installation and works as a shared folder on Pandora's box hardware. Inside of the Kulux folder, we can find two folders, a content folder and a version folder. On our hardware, except for our compact players, the content folder is a separate drive, which is linked to the total size of the SSD drives. This is the directory for all necessary files for the show. Therefore, we recommend only using this folder to place all the projects and content regarding your show in this location. We do this to ensure that we maximize performance and space on the SSDs, which are designed for this specific task. Furthermore, this folder is very useful for Pandora's box setups, even when using your own hardware. The content folder is not as a separate drive path because when we transfer a file from one Pandora's box machine to another, the file will be stored under the same path. That is why we always recommend to first store your files in the C Kulux content path, as this is available on every Pandora's box device. We are using a Cronus for the Pandora's box hardware factory settings. Please make a boot stick when you get your new hardware from us and keep this boot stick somewhere safe to use it in the case of emergency. Here you can find more information about how to create the Acronis bootstick. We can check under the computer management and then disk management the total disk size and the free space of the size of the content folder. The Pandora's box menu also shows the available free space left for your content. To put together what we have done for our setup, we set the output resolution on our server for the projectors and check the Pandora's box version in the configuration. For doing a quick playback on the client, after we finish our setup, we need to use a video. We can take any video from the content folder. It's now time to press the button on the Pandora's box menu to open a client. And there we have the small client window. On the top bar, we can see the Pandora's box software license. In our case, it's a dual server software and the Pandora's box version. We can only connect a master to a client when they both have the same version. The black screen is a small render preview, which is now showing black because it is not connected to the master and therefore has nothing programmed for the client. If multiple network connections are in place, you can choose the designated one for Pandora's box from the drop-down list. When the client is connected to the master as part of the project, we can also see the master IP. Since we started the client, we can now disconnect the VNC connection with the disconnect button on the remote tool. Please do this every time when you have finished working on a machine remotely, as keeping a VNC connection alive has a negative impact on the computer's performance and the network usage. Now, we minimize the remote tool and we go back to our master system. The next step is to open our manager by clicking on the master button on the Pandora's box menu. The pop-up window welcomes us. This pop-up window will be further explained in the first grade training. For now, we open a new project because our goal is to set the connection between the master and the client. On the top bar, you see the information about the Pandora's box software license and the version number. The master version matches to the client version. So far, so good. In the Assets tab, we see our local machine and its drives. Now don't forget the local machine is the master. Next to the local, the IP address of the master is displayed. We didn't change the domain on the client, which is by default zero. Also the master's domain is at a default, namely zero. Once we have started the software on the client, then it will immediately be visible in the Assets tab. 
because both of the domains are set to zero. But in case we cannot see the client in the assets tab, then we need to check the domain of the master. Therefore, we go to the config tab and enter the network settings. There we have the same option for choosing the network adapter, just like in the client window. Now that we know that both machines are in the same domain, we know that the communication between them won't be lost. With a double click on the server, we can see its Windows folder. The procedure of how to add content to our project and how to program on the server is a topic for the first grade training. We quickly put a video on the client to test the connection. As you can see on our projection, it's playing back the video and we can enter full screen. Let's summarize what we have learned about the Pandora's box menu till now. Now we know how easy we can deal with the Pandora's box menu to open and work with different options like the network settings, display settings, remote tool, test pattern, and choosing the installed Pandora's box version within the configuration. Now we have learned about important settings and checked what we need to do every time we have a new Pandora's box setup, just in case you've forgotten. Point number one, set up a dedicated network for the Pandora's box setup. Add the IP address and the subnet mask within the network settings because the master and client must be on the same IP range. Point number two, use the remote tool to check the necessary settings on different machines in your setup. Remember, the Pandora's box menu should be already installed on those machines. Point number three, update the Pandora's box version when there's a new release available and make sure to use the same on all connected machines. Point number four, Set the graphics card settings for your outputs before you start Pandora's box. Point number five. Check the test pattern to check the output device alignment, color, brightness, and the sharpness of your projectors. Point number six. Check the domain of the Pandora's box software, which should be the same to find and communicate to each other. Another important resource that we have is our help file. You'll find a lot of useful information by clicking on the help file button. You can also find the online help file and video tutorials on our homepage at christypandorasbox.com. Please use it whenever you have a question. Now, let's go back to the remote tool. It's time to go out of the full screen by clicking on the exit full screen. And then we close the client and shut down the server. We can do it easily from the remote tool. By opening the commands tab, we can see the following options, start or close a master or client. This can be done for all or any individual machine. The same can be applied for reboot and shutdown. We can start the task manager when needed too. It is also important to set the time and date on all of the machines. This completes your pre-training video. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to welcome you to your first grade training.